Um, sponsors need to promote the, okay, Stoneville clubs and grand sponsors need to promote the MSA at all their events and clubs. Clubhouses and uh, their events basically pushing the MSA on the people in their group, just like I do on the internet. Um, not enough of MSAs on the internet. Expand your reach. That was it. I'm going to add one thing, and I hope you guys don't care that I'm adding this, but um, it's a big one, but tying in with other organizations, ORV organizations, um, hunters, working together with them as opposed to working alone as just, we're all, we all like the outdoors, so working with other organizations, ORVs and hunting and blah, blah, blah. So, Paul, well, the last one, collaborative partnerships yes. with other outdoor organizations? The same, yes. Collaborative partnerships? Yes. Don, do we share a lot of information between, like, I'm sure with the International Soil Milk Club Association, but like with Minnesota and with Wisconsin and, and, uh, and the likes of and that's sharing things? We do. As a matter of fact, Jim and I and Bill are headed out to Idaho on the 10th. Well, the, it's called ISC, International Soil Milk Congress. We're going out there, and we do the same thing. We get, we get these groups, we talk about like issues. And just to quickly touch on, on the um, hunters and fishers, um, Bill sets on a lot of these um, committees that he goes to in Lansing and around the state that we do tie in with these other groups. And again, that's something that, that has come about here in the last few years. More so, I mean, we've always been tied to them, we're, we're tying ourselves to these groups, but at the same time, we have to be careful how much we tie it, tie it because there's, there's staff who's on, on, on every issue. So we do, it's there, and we need to make that more public. But Bill sets on a lot of committees. Matter of fact, we sit down here a little bit ago and said, Bill, how do we, how do we jockey your time so we're, we're spending your time better instead of going from here, here to here, you know, it's like crazy. There's only one group left. Is there? I was going to omit them. Number three. Three? Yes. What do we got? Well, there's only one because Russ is up here. But no. <laughs> We have uh, number one is just us as stone dealers, the negative perception. Losers and cruisers. We're not all about that. I mean, I think the, what we've done over the past, how many years have we been doing zero tolerance? Ten years now? Uh, no, we're, not that long. Probably about seven. seven. Uh, we're doing a good job of that, but it still needs to be changed. Zero tolerance? Um, just the perception of it, uh, and then we talked about uh, just, you know, like I said, boozers and cruisers, you know, we're out there cruising around drinking and driving, which, you know, we need to change that, that it's not all of what we are about as far as snowmobiles go. Can, can I jump in just, yeah. I want to tie the conversation that was just had about other states and this concept, this image of boozers and cruisers. I have a perception of Wisconsin of being the capital of booze and cruise. I've never been there, I have. but I've heard the stories, and it's my perception of it. Guys, is there a feeling like that? When we adapted Zero Tunnel seven years ago, there was a lot of states that didn't want to say zero tolerance. We as Michigan said, we're adopting zero tolerance. So you said it. We said it right here. Now, Wisconsin, <coughs> let me, so I don't get this way out of whack here. There were states that felt that they didn't want to say zero tolerance, they wanted responsible riding. And we said, yeah, that is called responsible riding, riding is zero tolerance. And that's where we went with this. We felt as an organization, no, I like that beer. But keys and water and alcohol is still mixed. And our society is dictating that more and more. So with that, how can we say, yeah, I can do it okay. Well, Let's say zero tolerance. That's how the that's how the officers in the MSA felt that we need to project it to the local stone builder that we are not going to put any alcohol in our body until after the keys are away. We're not saying that she never drink the yeah. because I couldn't do that. Like, oh, <laughs> okay, or, or a glass of red wine. You know, so but when ride, he said no. That way, we're setting examples. Sets here. And that was the whole purpose 
of the zero targets. Really want to add to that? Yeah, well, yeah. And, and we said that at all MSA functions will be zero target. That as a board member and an officer of MSA, we, we tell you you have to take the pledge. Period. Now, you as a member, you're, that's your choice. You have to, you don't have to do it to be a member. We had a lot of members that, when we adopted it, said, hey, we're not gonna, we're not gonna join. We're, we're dropping our membership because we don't believe in zero tolerance. We love having a beer and a burger. I said, you don't have to quit. You can still have a beer and a burger. But when you're at an MSA event on a ride, it's a zero tolerance ride. And if you can't deal with that, go ride with yourself somewhere else. You just don't The perception on the forums, exactly. though, is the zero tolerance means you're not wanted in the MSA. Yeah, I know. And, and how do we get that word out? To, how do you get that word out to say, well, it's okay if you want to. You too, what we just said. You know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Put, exactly. The link, put it right yeah. up on the, on the same website. Yep, yep that, that we, we've adopted it. And, and, I, and I'll give you a little story on Wisconsin. And they have resisted it because they get a lot of money from their tavern leagues uh, to run their state association. And they said, look, we are not, we're not going to do this. Um, and it, that's your choice. And the media has really been hammering them the last few because of their fatality rate, where ours was going down, their rate has been going up. Um, and, and so they've been catching a lot. Last year, they had the, in Milwaukee, the number one newscaster, he was messed up bad, killed himself on a stolen. Guy had like .22 in a tree, killed himself. Now. Here's how it got portrayed. That poor newscaster was killed on a stone. Sure. Anything that he was .22, drunk out of his mind, he shouldn't have been. He wasn't, a perfect, he, he wasn't even a regular soldier. Just had a buddy sled, went up, didn't have a helmet on, killed himself. You know, helmet, would he believe? Who knows? But that, that, that created so much ration of crap in Wisconsin right now that. Their legislature now saying, uh oh, oh, we need to do something. So they're going to start really clamping down on, 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 on what's going on in Wisconsin. It was all done negatively. The Wisconsin Association had no leg to stand on because they said, well, yeah, we don't have a problem with drinking driving. Well, that works out good in the media. You know, I mean, we used to, 10 years ago, MSA said, nothing wrong with a beer and a burger, do it responsibly. We were sitting at Del Meyer at the Larry, or at the, that's Larry Sevenski's up there. There was probably 12 board members sitting there. There was one guy at the end of the table had a beer, everybody else having Cokes. Six people walked by and said, look at them MSA guys drinking. You know, at that point we said, we have to say zero tolerance. Because we're the state association. We're the example. That's where we're going to set. You have to lead by example. And, and, and the success of that uh, was evident when we had that tragedy here where L. Brooks Patterson lost his son on, in a snowmobile accident. He was a passenger on a snowmobile late at night, drinking, no helmet, gets sideswiped, tragedy, you know, dies, mm -hmm. and yet it, it, you could see the, the effort to turn this in, into a real negative uh, media story, and it got it did a little bit of that, but I know they talked to you. I know I talked to them, and we said, "Look, it, this is terrible. That's why we promote zero tolerance, and that's why we promote safety classes. That's why we require people to wear helmets." And, and that becomes uh, and it, talking points for the MSA going. And that story we went these. away. That story just went away. Okay. I want to get back to one thing. We'll get right back. One real quick point. Um, I don't know if anybody ever goes through the fatality report in Michigan in detail every year. Um, do it with a highlighter sometime. Cross off alcohol, riding on roads, and without a helmet. There's two accidents a year. Speed. Yeah. Speed's on That's subjective, everyone. but yeah, yeah, there's two legitimate accident, accidents a year. The rest is Darwin was right. Mm -hmm. And we even got tagged with the three fishermen who. No, you don't you report your accidents, do you? No, he doesn't. Um, all right, what else you got in your group? What accidents? I never had, I haven't had any accidents. You got anything else? Fuel issues. Fuel. Just how fuel is going to impact. On <laughs> there. We've got it a few places. How it's going to downplay um, the hotel motel business, or what you have up in Scenic Don. Uh, it's huge. Uh, we talked about unemployed, unemployment, what that's going to do, obviously, how it's going to impact. 
we discussed weather as well. Um, 